<laughs> yes. This is Calicat the Calicatster on Halloween. I just watched uh, The Best Exotic Nanite Hotel, a play on the Grand Budapest Hotel, uh, and also a sort of a mirror spin-off of the, uh, the the hotel sitcom they want to do. I'm, I'm thinking it's a it's connected to that. Uh, it has all kinds of uh, it has some weird weird references to <laughs> the, there's 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 okay so <laughs> um they go to a planet where there's a nanite thing attacking and then they're like uh the they they have uh, Jennifer Jennifer of course uh, but she, in this version Jennifer is a an Andorian yeah Jennifer's an Andorian she's a, she's a, uh, she and Mariner were dating because it's the future, and the bisexual doesn't matter, because it's the future, and they just play that whole thing, card going on, uh, which would make her more similar to to the to the, the other character that inspired Tendi than it would the character that inspired her being the daughter of, of, of the Elijah from uh, our series, but, but, but yes, um, but race swapped. In the original, the Elijah is a white girl. But no one sees the fire. That's fine. That's fine. Um, <laughs> that's perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, so, so they're, yeah. Anyway, so we have, uh, we have a rogue admiral on the planet who is, who looks kind of like Cal Cat, which is funny. Uh, but, but this story has a star date of 59653. Five, um, so it's, so it's set in 2383, early 2383, around March. And uh, that's when this episode is, is set. Like the last one was early 2383 as well. Uh, so this is a little before the end of, of Prodigy, uh, which was uh, set in 2383 to 2385. So this is before Prodigy. Um, the uh, the number of interesting little tidbits are thrown in there in in the story. Uh, it, uh, nods to the Starship Locations book series. It'd be nice if McCann's people would buy my books on, on Amazon instead of just reading through them. Part time. Buy them too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, they do a twist on the whole. Uh, yeah, they do a twist on the, on the red shirt thing. Instead of that, it's a ransom. There's a guy early on, the black guy with his hands all torn off, and and <laughs> ransom's gonna like. Uh, and they're gonna grow his hands back because they can do that apparently. Um, uh, <laughs> and he leaves, and then and Boimler's afraid that he's gonna be sacrificed to the to the the volcano guy on the planet, the, the crazy admiral. And they spoof for the crazy admiral thing. Uh, very Cal Cat story. Uh, the guy wouldn't be isn't really a Cal Cat. He would be somebody left there from the twenty three eighty period, so it'd be the early Chimera period. So he's. He's Roger Math, basically, which is funny. Oh. <laughs> so it's it's Roger, it's a teacher, Calicat. It's kind of funny. Um, <laughs> or, or is he Clark? He's not Roger Math. He's Clark. He's Sam Clark. That's who that is. Yeah, that's who that is. That's the other teacher. That's not Roger. That's, that's Steve. Steve Clark. All right. Cool. Steve Clark isn't that. Fine. All right. You totally do that. Yeah, he's bald and he's Steve Park. Um, yeah, it's not me, Steve Park. But now, you know, it's 24 years later, so in that timeline, so it's 20 years later, I would look kind of more like him just because, you know, the hair, but, but it's not supposed to be me. It, it looks a little like me, but it, that's what's funny about it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's Steve Park. It's not Roger, it's Steve. That makes more sense. That, that and, and the other thing makes more sense, and it's probably, it's, not a nod to Owl House, but that'd be kind of cool. I uh, haven't seen that show, but I heard about it. Um, it's not a nod to that. It's a nod to uh, the Hidden Frontiers in that, in that show. It's a nod to that. And that guy is a nod to that guy, more than it is the Steve Clark of, of, of Vanguards. Uh, they also throw... <laughs> well, they throw a lot of Easter eggs in here. The, the, the Nanites, as it turns out, are like a... Uh, well, they they go through the mission. They go through the the thing they, to stop the nanite thing. It forms a geodesic. They they spoof the rolling rock from Indiana Jones and the and the end of Indiana Jones Five, where they're chasing around with a cart thing. 
uh, of which Indiana Jones 5, uh, the, the fifth one, uh, they're spoofing a James Bond movie, which did that. A Roger Moore James Bond movie. And this kind of is a spoof of that, too. Uh, Roger Moore, not, not, not the other guy. It's Roger, it's 80s James Bond movie. It's a Roger Moore one. Uh, it's, uh, it's a beautiful kill, and it's, and it's uh, another octopus. A number of things get spoofed in there. A little bit of Casino Royale, a little bit. A little bit. Um, but but not directly, just indirectly. Like, oh, casino thing on planet with, with bad guy. That bad idea that the bad guy is running things as his admiral had escaped. Very, very Bond type of story in, in, in general sense. Uh, yeah. The nanite things, it turns out, is a, is a, a, a amoebic spaceship thing in another dimension. That's a smaller dimension, like the like the, the little one little ship dimension from that one episode of DS9, and in it they have a they have a starship called the Endeavor that's Intrepid class, and it's yeah, captained by a lady in there in that universe, and it's like it's like it's Sandy, <laughs> it's Sandra, it's Sandra Talisman, the Intrepid. That that's that's a Chef's kiss, as they say, Chef's kiss. Mwah. <laughs> Love it. That universe is, yeah, they, they, they were probably, McMahon's people were probably figuring, yeah, he's going to do Canary Space and Starcrackers next, so we're going to reference, uh, Vanguard's next, so we're going to reference those two stories in Lord X. So that takes place 20 years ago. And, and they keep setting up the, and so we're going to reference that, yeah, in our inner story. Like, it's taking place during, but it's not. That, that's funny. Um, Yeah. <clears throat> And if it's something else entirely, that's fun too. And if it's actually a reference to uh, uh, that other episode, I'm sure it actually is that. It's not my, a reference to mine at all. How, how could it be? But uh, but it's probably a reference to a, an episode of Rick and Morty, actually, uh, which that guy is a Rick and Morty guy. So it's, so it's a Rick and Morty reference. But I'm going to say that it could also be a reference to Computer Space and Star Trek, which is not, takes place, does not take place in a smaller dimension. It's the same dimension. It's just a parallel universe. Uh, they've been doing that a lot lately in these episodes. You know, parallel universe. Uh, yeah, so that is funny. Um, <laughs> oh, the, the, there's a Cal Cat character in there, and he rejoins Starfleet at the end. The Admiral. Uh, a roundabout way that, uh, yeah, the similarities to the other the other shows are. It's it's, it's funny. I mean, the Endeavor is the hero ship of Canary Space, so yeah, it's directly referencing Canary Space. Uh, it's not Intrepid class, though. It's uh, something else, but... <laughs> it's not. It's an extra solar vehicle. Uh, it's a... I think the class is... Is it a Polish ship class, or is that the other guy? Uh, called a Galinsky class? The ship? I think it is. They're Galinsky class ships. I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, as of uh, Uncle Bill Galinsky dying, they became Galinsky class. Before that, they were something else. Intrepid class or something. <laughs> Because they can't say Enterprise, so it's like some other you know, <laughs> Endeavor or something. The Endeavor, that's great. Uh, I'm sure that also references someone else's fan film called Endeavor. It's probably even. And, and the one little ship story with Moriarty and the Cube as well. That kind of fun stuff. But no, it's not a micro-universe. But it is funny that they do that because they're in, in, in all of the... Uh, you know, we've been doing these uh, fan fiction, fan film stories with action figures since the, well, really since uh, 2019, in somewhere or another, uh, that, that first movie taking play, uh, took took almost 12 years to make, because we kept doing it off and on and off and on, and we wanted Mark's cards to be the director, so that's what we had. So it, the director of the first, first two-thirds of that miniseries, and then the last 50 minutes is more Cal Cat, because he wasn't available for the last, last part of that miniseries. Uh, comes in a little bit toward the end there. Does some, some lines, but that's about it. He kind of phones them in. But it worked, so, yeah. And and the first scene filmed in that, in Starship Chimera, was the, the, the ship the, the thing. Uh, also, the, uh, in our uh, in our fan film, the, the uh, Canary Space story, just began filming the pilot the episode, and, uh, and, uh, it's not set in 2383, it's set in 2483, so it's 100 years after uh, this, this series. 
So it's quite a bit longer off in the future. And it doesn't have small miniature people, but it is funny because our fan films do do the characters with little action figures. So, so, action figures. so yeah, that totally works. Um, <laughs> it's a it's a reference to the Starship locations, absolutely. It, it's got to be what it is, <laughs> which is awesome. Yes. They're tiny little action figures, and they live on a little action figure ship inside the little... <laughs> but they would be, uh, technically, if this was 20-some years ago, 2383, they would technically have... They would be the crew of another ship adjacent to the original Chimera, which was under Catan cards, flying through the galaxy. The Rear Admiral Calcat, Rear Admiral Mark's cards. If, that, if the Chimera shows up at some point in this... Uh, they got they got another seven episodes left. So if, he sh if that ship shows up at some point, that'd be funny. That'd be very funny. Or even the Bedusa would be funny. But the Chimera would be even more funny. Uh, it technically could. Um, <laughs> that'd be hilarious. So I'd, I'd, I wouldn't be surprised if that little Calicat shows up. Um, mm. <laughs> I, I, I know that um, we're going to get a cameo from at least some other Voyager people. There's some other Voyager people coming. They could be in it. I'm give away who. I think if, they already gave away one of them. So. <clears throat> they already did. Yeah, they already went hand waved to that. They should hand wave to Prodigy as well. Mm. But yeah, mm -hmm. for 50 episodes of this. I think Prodigy only had 40 episodes, but but yeah, this was 50. It's a little longer, but five years instead of two. Yeah, these short seasons too. They can film the whole thing and then animate it. Script. Uh, I liked how they did the 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 breakup, the the classic breakup story, wacky sort of, but breakup, not breakup, breakup, not breakup thing. Uh, but is it consistent with the Captain Mariner from Legacy later on, who was married to Boimler? Yes, absolutely consistent with the twenty years later Mariner, uh, because she could be bi. This is the future. She doesn't bother her at all. <laughs> Maybe they they have an open relationship. They probably do. Um, oh my! Also, oh my! Yes. Um, as Sulu would say, oh my. So yeah, fine episode. Well, sure, probably overthinking the heck out of it. But, but yeah, in referencing the Endeavor as a tiny ship with a lack of your people in it. You're definitely referencing Starship locations. Yeah. <laughs> Chef's kiss. <sighs> <laughs>